we live in the Gulf Coast, and I'm preaching a session here and teaching a session to you. You know, I appreciate all of those in the ICCI, but there's a lot of you that are not a part of the Independent Christian Churches International who come by one of the different uh, places that this is aired on. And, and, I, and I, I know you may not know where we live and what we do, but we live in the Gulf Coast. And I recently moved from right on the coast up north about 60 miles. The first thing I did there was put a generator in on the home. It was an expensive option, but there was no expensive option for being without power for weeks at a time when a hurricane comes through. And we who operate in disaster recovery and work with churches and need to, to have power and need to be available when, when the storm is on, uh, the trucks are rolling, the phone's got to be up. I felt that that was the best thing I could do, best money to spend to put a generator on the, on the whole property so the offices and everything would be up generate that power. When I was preparing this, how to generate hope in a desperate situation, it became very real to me that many people just base themselves on a cultural foundation and their hope is moving up in the organization, moving up and getting a better church, moving up and getting a better this or that or the other, getting someone to underwrite your work that you want to do for the Lord, Never thinking that generators that generate hope are not built on other people. It's built on you and the Lord, built upon the things that you and the Lord do together. The faith, the hope, the eternal life that you dream of, and they don't put that in. So this series is helping you to choose what to put into your life to make sure that when you hit situations that are desperate, you can separate the desperate from the situation and you can make sure that it's just a situation that can be approached by peace and joy, by power and authority, and get the right fuel mixture to cause that engine that God put within you called faith to begin to propel you out of that situation into the place. We spoke last of four actions that you can take that will propel you into that place, that will bring you into the glory of of being out of a desperate situation. The number one one was know that God is our source of hope. Who signs your paycheck? Doesn't matter whose name is on there, Jesus Christ has always signed my paycheck. No matter how many churches I go to, no matter how many things that come to us, I look not at the signature, I thank the Lord for it. Now I appreciate the people who provide it, I appreciate those that God moved on to send it or bring it. I appreciate the companies that support. I, I appreciate the, the, the businesses that I've been able to be involved in, all of that. But in reality, not one of it was my source. So I oh, know you got yours. No, you don't. No, 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 no. If that's your thought, you really don't because I have what I have because of my faith and my source, which is Jesus Christ. This life is not the end result for me. I'm on my way to heaven. I'm on my way to live with him forever and after and rule and reign with him. I'm on my way to be there with you one day. And I want to take as many people with me. And to do that, we must keep you that are ministering and doing the work of the Lord and leading our churches and leading in the different places. We must keep you encouraged that you might do it. So number one, action that you can take is to choose that God will be your source from here on out. And number two, choose to seek the Lord. I was praying yesterday morning early, like 11.45 Saturday night till about 12.45 Sunday morning. That's early in the morning. And, and I finally, I got, I got tickled at myself and said, won't you go to sleep? Well, I was having a good time talking to the Lord about something I believe was important to him. And there was, there was a, there was a, a two-way conversation, and I, I, I have chose to seek the Lord. I chose in my life to not seek the advice of men until I seek the Lord. Then when I seek the advice of men, I can know whether or not what they are telling me is the advice of the Lord. Many people go and seek advice from everybody. 
They'll go seek advice from five preachers. I know it because I hear, the, did you hear so-and-so? They asked me this question. They asked, we just go around the round robin, ask a bunch of guys, take a take a, a, a opinion check of what everybody thinks you ought to do, and then that's God. Honey, that's not God. Friend, that's not God. Sir, that's not God. Ma'am, that's not God. You have to choose to seek the Lord for your situations. That way, the Lord will enter into your business, your life, your stories. He will enter into your place. Let's look in Mark chapter 24, or ch or chapter 2, Mark chapter 2, uh, verse 1 through 4. A few days later, when Jesus again entered Capernaum, I'm going to paraphrase it, okay? Uh, those of you that are purists, then you won't know whether I'm reading from the King James or from the NIV or from whatever. So I don't want to get an argument with you over, over former fashion. I'm just going to paraphrase the word. A few days later, Mark 2, 1 through 4, Jesus again entered Capernaum. The people heard he had come home. So many gathered that there was no room left, not even outside the door. And he starts preaching. Well, some men came by, bringing to him a paralytic carried on a stretcher. Since they could not get to Jesus because of the crowd, they made an opening in the roof above Jesus, and after digging through it, lowered the mat the paralyzed man was lying on. I have to tell you, this is probably one of the greatest generators of hope in the scriptures. Here's, here, here's the analysis. Number one, they heard about Jesus. Number one, they heard about, do you remember when you heard about Jesus? Maybe you need to remind yourself uh, that in this disparate situation you're in, Jesus hasn't left. He said he would never leave you or forsake you. No matter what has occurred, what has happened, what, what a mess we've made, or he has not left us. So hear about Jesus again. Hear about Jesus again. I'm, I'm just going to say it again. You have to tell yourself all over, I, I'm listening. When they heard about Jesus, they said, well, let's go see Jesus. But when they got there, there was a crowd around Jesus. Now, what this speaks to me in the generation of hope in a desperate situation is that they were in a desperate situation. They had this man that was, that was paralytic or a palsy. He couldn't walk. He was a friend of theirs. Four of them carried him on a stretcher to go to see him. That's hope. They got all generated. Let's go see Jesus. He's going to take care of you. We're going to go. We're going to go with carrying you, but you're going to walk coming home with us. They were generating that faith, man, generating that hope, building that up. But when they got to where Jesus was, it was crowded. Is it crowded where you are with Jesus right now? Maybe you need to come up a little higher. Somebody out of the four men, or maybe it was even the guy being carried, looked at that crowd, said, we'll never get in like this. We'll never move forward. We have to back up, go home. But somebody said, let's go higher. Let's get up out of this situation. Seeking the Lord, they began to climb. Seeking the Lord, they began to make an opening in the roof. And after digging through it, they then came back down to the situation at hand. Right now, when you come to Jesus in this desperate situation, it may be because of the crowd that you don't get your answer. Too much talking, too much going on around you. Go silent for a little bit. Seek the Lord. Get in a place to where you can seek him while he may be found. That's what Isaiah said. He said, call on him while he's near. Uh, Lamentations, Solomon cried out, said, the Lord is good to those whose hope is in him and to the one who seeks him. So I'm going to send you away with a challenge today. Before you come back and listen uh, the next time to the rest of this, uh, I've got two more faith actions you can take. Take those first two actions. Number one, make him your source. Number two, go seek the Lord. Find him again in your heart and don't let the crowd keep you out. You can generate hope in this desperate situation. God bless you.